Why are you taking this class? Is it because you wanted to take physics? Or because your program's making you? It's okay. Your program's probably making you, and that's fine. Uh, your program feels it's important, okay? Um, but it's, it, you shouldn't be afraid of it, okay? I can help you. Uh, we'll go through the math. Um, I'll do my best to work as many problems as we can so you can see um, how to do it. And I don't like surprises. So as I mentioned before, when we have an exam, um, we'll do a review and I'll tell you which problems you should look at and what you should study for the exam. Uh, you should uh, really take me seriously when I give you that review and I say, this is probably going to be on the test or this problem. So um, definitely review that stuff. Okay. Um, so physics is required for most science degrees and it's important uh, for medicine, for uh, biology. There's a lot of um, physics things in, uh, in a hospital. Hey, radiology. If you are going into radiology, then you definitely need physics. So the people that made your program think that physics is important. The National Research Council thinks that people in the sciences should have uh, a deeper understanding of physics. Science is becoming more and more interdisciplinary. And so having a broader understanding of what's going on in other disciplines besides just what you do is important. Um, I also like to think that uh, physics can help you know what's real, right? When you, um, when you read a, something in the news, depending on where you get it, um, it's not always clear or not if what you're reading is true. Sometimes if you read something on Facebook, it may or may not be true, kind of depends. Uh, so, uh, but physics can help you determine what's real, right? There are some conspiracy theorists out there who think that aliens live here on Earth and are secretly controlling the governments. How could you refute that? Well, you might say, you know, uh, our galaxy is really big, right? So if there was intelligent life out there somewhere, how would they get here? Well, if they were on the other side of our, our galaxy, which is pretty close, right? Uh, it takes a hundred thousand light year, it takes a hundred thousand years for light to reach us just from the other side of our galaxy. Uh, unless they were like on Alpha Centauri, which is only four light years away, maybe they could they could make it here in a few hundred years. We can't travel at light speed, right? But if aliens did come here, right, they would have had to travel maybe for thousands of years. So it's very unlikely that anything from another planet could reach us in any reasonable amount of time, unless they can bend space or something. Um, but from the way that we understand physics, there's no way that aliens could get here from another planet. It's just too far, right? And then how would they find us? Right, because uh, it's really hard to see other planets with a telescope. We started broadcasting TV signals in the 1950s, so those signals are heading out into space, and they've traveled about 50 light years. Right, so uh, there used to be a program called SETI where we would uh, listen for radio signals from other planets, but. Um, that's assuming that those signals have reached us, right? And if there was intelligent life out there, um, who's to say they didn't wipe themselves out 100,000 years ago or a million years ago, okay? So we can use science and physics to determine if things are true or not, right? Um, physics can help with that, right? All right, so in the 18th century, uh, technology was not like it is today. Uh, if, you, if your leg got injured and it got infected, they might have to cut it off. Um, if you broke your leg, 
Uh, we've come a long way with x-rays and prosthetic limbs. We can replace bones now uh, with materials developed using physics. Um, and where would we be without microscopes? Okay, microscopes have changed everything. So an understanding of optics is essential for um, all types of medicine. Ultrasounds are amazing. We can look at babies inside of the womb uh, without um, any type of invasive procedure, just using sound waves. So that's really cool. Um, of course, MRIs are um, essential for modern medicine. So physics plays an integral role in healthcare. Uh, it's really amazing with uh, the, the things that we can do. Um, you can find brain tumors. Sometimes you can even treat them. Um, and it, over the next century, uh, advances in medicine will be absolutely amazing. So maybe they'll use uh, nanobots to kill cancer cells. Right? I know a lot of people thought there were nanobots in the COVID vaccine. I'm like, man, how did they build those? I want to know the blueprints for the nanobots uh, in COVID. Uh, so that's something that uh, maybe in the future we could use nanotechnology to cure diseases. So little tiny robots or devices that could go inside of your body and look for cancer cells or certain kinds of germs and maybe even repair tissue. We can also use physics and technology to uh, study biology. Uh, we can track whales and sea turtles. Uh, we can use satellites to pinpoint their locations and understand um, where they feed and, and how they live. So we can learn a lot about biology using physics. All right, but um, let's take a look now at things that are related to your homework, right? Because your homework is going to be in chapter one of Pearson. And so uh, we should start talking about the problems for homework. The first homework assignment I think is due tomorrow. So chapter one homework will be due tomorrow evening. Okay. Um, so get on Pearson as soon as possible. And let me, uh, if you haven't already done so, uh, if you go to our Canvas section, um, this class in uh, Canvas, if you go to announcements, okay, um, then it says the first announcement, college physics one registration. There's a PDF here. If you click on it, then there's a link to my section, right? So click on this link and it will take you to this section of physics. Register for me. I am Wisby 07017, okay? And then you'll have access to Pearson. Uh, you can purchase, as I mentioned before, a one semester access if you don't think you're gonna go on with Pearson. Dr. Jean Potvin uses Pearson. So if you know you're gonna take his physics too, um, then you can register for it. Um, you can get the, the whole year, but all right. So this is how you sign up for my section of class. All right. So um, chapter one is about motion. Uh, and we're going to talk about uh, vectors. Hey, right? what is a vector? But it's mostly about motion. Right? So a lot of physics has to do with motion. Motion's important for biology because um, how an organism eats is really determined by physics. Right? So what kind of prey do they use? Or what kind of prey do they eat? So uh, falcons have very good vision and uh, and they're very fast. Peregrine falcon can go over, or I think it's over 200 kilometers an hour when it's diving. Um, and um, that's all determined by physics. In order to catch their prey, they have to go that fast. Uh, they have to have very good vision. 
in order to find their prey, and we can analyze their motion using stop motion. So here's a picture of a bird in flight. And if the uh, camera takes a picture, say every 0.1 seconds, okay? So it's just a, pack, a picture, a camera taking pictures really quickly, okay? Then um, we can find uh, the distance that they travel and how quickly they travel. All right, so you're all familiar with uh, speed, right? When you're driving your car, your speedometer's in miles per hour. Um, that's how quickly you're moving in a straight line, right? So if I ride my skateboard, so I have a certain velocity going this way and a speed, but I'm not turning, right? If I if I turn or I'm thinking about velocity, then um, I, it has a position, right? Has a direction, and if it's something like speed, then it has a magnitude, okay? Now, normally when you think about speed, think about that number on your speedometer. But if we're thinking about velocity, we might, uh, you need to know your origin. So if my origin is this faucet, okay? Then I would draw a line from the faucet to my skateboard. And so my velocity vector points from the faucet over to my skateboard. And uh, as I'm riding my skateboard, then that arrow uh, keeps pointing at my skateboard. And so the direction has changed uh, and the magnitude has also changed. But Let's look at the skier, okay? So as the skier is going off of this hill, right, his velocity going this way doesn't really change. All right, so as I draw my time, uh, say in 0.1 seconds, he's here. And then in 0.1 seconds, he's here. And then here. And here. And then here. So the distance between these lines doesn't really change a lot. Right? But uh, his velocity going this way is kind of constant. Right? It doesn't really change much. Right? So the distance between those lines sort of stays the same. But he goes up in the air. Right? So if I if I do this for his vertical position, so I'll draw one line here, the next one here, and then here, and then another one here, and then here, and then down here. Right? So if I'm looking at the the distance between those lines, as he's going up, the distance between those lines gets bigger. And then as he starts to get up to the top here, right, uh, the distance between this line and the next one gets a little bit smaller. Um, and then it, it looks like he changes direction here and he, he starts to come back down, right? And that's because when you throw things up in the air, they always come back down. Right? So it goes up, and right when it's at the top, when it was at the very, very top, its position isn't changing a lot. So just for an instant, its velocity in the y direction is zero. Right? So it does not, it does not change. But we can take pictures like this, and we can analyze uh, motion. So we're going to use numbers to just to describe motion, right? We're gonna use speed or and velocity to describe how fast is something moving, right? So we use uh, miles per hour. That means if I'm driving at 60 miles an hour for two hours, then I will have gone 120 miles after that two hours. Um, when we're talking about vectors, we're going to use uh, uh, some trigonometry. So 
this slide is extremely important, right? So hopefully, um, if it's been a while since you've done some trig, that's okay. Um, but this slide is, um, this slide will help, right? So there's a couple of things here. Of course, we have cosine of and sine and tangent. So let's do a little bit of review here. So if I want to find cosine, I use cosine to find the angle here, okay? So uh, if I know the uh, adjacent side here, so if here's my angle, right? Adjacent means the side closest to the angle, right? And then my hypotenuse of the triangle, that's the um, just that's the longest side of the triangle. And what's important about this triangle is that it's a right triangle. So that angle there at the base here, this is 90 degrees. Okay. Um, so these work if it's a right triangle, right? So if your problem seems like it doesn't have a right triangle, you may need to put the vectors in terms of a right triangle. So you may need to think about a different angle, right? But this, if, if you can master these trigonometric functions, this will take you a long way in this class, okay? Uh, sine is similar, so uh, it's the opposite over the hypotenuse, okay? And if you want to know the angle, then you need to take the arc sign, okay? So, and your calculators uh, should be able to do cosine, arc cosine, arc sine, um, arc tangent, and tangent, okay? Now, when you do the angle, you want to make sure that your calculator is probably in degrees, okay? So, a lot of calculators have settings. I don't know where they all are, but double check that your calculator is in degrees because in this class, it's helpful if you think about it in terms of degrees. Like I know what 90 degrees is, right? That's a right triangle. I know that 180 degrees, right? I go all the way over here. That's 180 degrees. If your calculator is in radians, then what angle is this in radians? Pi not as intuitively obvious. So I suggest sticking to degrees, but make sure your calculator, check it right now. If you have a calculator, get it out, look at it, find that setting in there and change it to degrees. Because if you put an answer in an angle in there and it's not in degrees, you're gonna get something really weird. It's not gonna make sense that you will not get the problem right. You pierce it, okay? So Make sure it's in degrees, okay? And let's see here. Okay, so if I have a triangle here, right? Here's my angle theta here. Then I know that cosine of theta is equal to and I'll call this X, Y, and we'll call this H over here. So cosine is equal to X over H. Now there's some other important identities. So if I want to find the angle here, then I would say, I would take the arc cosine of both sides. So I'd say arc cosine of cosine of theta is equal to cosine, arc cosine of x over h. And what's arc cosine of cosine? Yes. What is it? It's theta. Yes, that's right. So this would give me the angle of the triangle right there, okay? That's how you find the angle if you know X and H, right? Now, there's some other things that we know about triangles, right? And um, this other one comes to us from our my favorite Greek cultist named Pythagoras. He lived on an island in ancient Greece, and he had a cult that worshipped numbers. And if you took any of the secrets of the math cult with you, 
they would execute you. Okay? But apparently one of the cultists escaped and he brought with him the Pythagorean theorem, which tells us that x squared plus y squared equals h squared. Okay, so um, with this, we can find out almost anything we want to know about a triangle. Now, triangles are important because when we're dealing with vectors, we're going to use triangles a lot. Okay, we might have uh, displacements in different directions. Okay, so let's say, all right, let's say I ride my skateboard one, two, three, four, five meters this way. You know, I can measure these meters really precisely. How precisely do you think I measure those meters? It's pretty accurate. I mean, I was within like 0. 0.0001 meter or something. Maybe. No rock, I don't think you. What do you think my uncertainty was? Because you're going to need this in the lab. Go to the lab and talk about uncertainty. Um, and, you have, and if I go this way, two meters, two. Okay. And one of the problems is going to be okay, I travel five meters this way, I travel two meters this way. What's the distance from where I started? There are two vectors here. There's a five meter vector going this way. And then there's a two meter vector going over this way. Okay, those are my two vectors, but I wanna know what the displacement of my skateboard is from where I started. So how far would it be if I walk from my origin over to my skateboard. So I measured nine meters. And I'm just sure that's pretty accurate. No, I don't know how accurate it is. But, okay, so let's assume that my measurements were correct. I went five meters that way, two meters up this way. What is the displacement? Okay, so calculate it right now on a piece of paper. Get out your paper, and then you're going to give it to me later, and I'm going to give you points for it. Go. So find your the displacements of my skateboard, and also tell me what the angle was. So what angle did I travel at? And... But wait, before you start solving this, we need to think about our axis. Okay? So I traveled this way. Okay? How should I set my x axis? Which direction should be positive x? We're going to go through more of this in a minute, but for, for now, let's say that if I traveled in this direction, it's positive x. And I went over here, and we'll say I went uh, negative two meters that way. If you can have negative and positive vectors, you can talk to your friends if you want to. If you have a buddy. If you don't have any friends in the class yet, now is a good time to sit by somebody else near you, make a buddy, make a friend. Physics is more fun with friends. It's like Twitter, right? If you're on Twitter all by yourself, it's not so much fun. Unless you have people to tweet at. Okay, does anybody have an answer yet? Okay, don't, don't tell me yet. I just want to see if you're done. Okay, so if you're finished, Take a picture with your cell phone and email it to me, what you did. And then I'll, we'll go through it together real quick. And then when I get your email, I'll see the timestamp was uh, 1050, okay? And so then I'll know that you, you did it. 
Or if you want to, well, you can just give me the piece of paper too, but maybe email it to me. Okay. Well, let's do this problem real quick. Uh, one of the things when you do physics problems is it's always good to draw pictures. Uh, they talk about it in the book, but drawing a diagram really helps you with the problem. So um, I like to draw diagrams. So here I'm gonna draw me on the skateboard. So here's my skateboard, I went this way. And then I went up this way, okay? And I went two meters this way, and I went five meters this way. So if I wanna find the hypotenuse, then I've got a, two sides of a triangle here. And so my hypotenuse will be here. And so I'll have uh, the hypotenuse will equal the square root of two squared plus five squared. So this is going to be four plus 25, okay? And that's gonna give me 29. Right, so uh, I know that the square root of or five times five is uh, 25 and six times six is 36. So I'll end up with about H equals 5.4 meters. And let me check. So I've got a calculator on my phone. So if I say four plus 25 equals 29. If I turn it sideways, it's a pseudo-scientific calculator. So 5.38, okay? So I was close, okay? Uh, and so that means my hypotenuse was about 5.4 meters, okay? And now my calculator here says 5.3815. Are all those digits on my calculator there? Does that mean anything? Do you believe that? It's very precise, right? Now, when I think about how I measured this, okay, I, I went like this and I said, that's about a meter, okay? But there's a lot of error in my measurements. So when I said 5.4 meters, uh, that's maybe accurate, but even 5.4 meters, that's probably uh, too many significant digits, right? Now, when I multiplied, when I took the square root of this, I get all of these digits here, but they really don't mean anything, right? So if you multiply two numbers together and um, you get a bunch of digits like that, should you put all those into the Pearson software? No, definitely not. It's not going to, it's not going to, uh, you're not going to get full credit for it because the Pearson software is supposed to check your significant digits. So if you want to get the right answer, you have to use the right amount of significant digits. Well, how do you know what the right amount of significant digits are? Um, oh no, it's doing this again. Okay, well, I don't need to use the internet right now anyways. But, actually, I was going to later. Uh, um, so if I have two numbers with a significant digit, right? So on my numbers here, two and five, how many significant digits do those have? One. So when I multiply them together then, what's the correct answer I should put here? Five. My two numbers that I... Okay, so the correct number is five. So if you're putting this into, uh, into Pearson, you'd only want to use that one significant digit, okay? Now, if I want to find the angle right here, okay, then I can use tangent. So I can say tangent of theta is equal to uh, opposite over adjacent. So that will be two divided by five, okay? And if I put my units in here, I have two meters divided by five meters. And so your units better cancel out, 
right? So the meters go away because what units do angles have? Is an angle in meters? No, there should be no units there. So I have tangent of two, two over five. And so then I'm gonna take the arc tangent of both sides, arc tangent of tangent equals theta. And then I'll take the arc tangent of this side. So I have tangent of minus one. That means arc tangent, right? If I say tan to the minus one, that means arc tangent. And so then I'll say uh, two divided by five. And I don't know, I don't remember my trig well enough because when I took trig, we were allowed to use calculators. But now apparently there are tables and they make you memorize those, which is probably a good thing. Um, I didn't, I didn't do that. So I'm going to use some, I'm going to use a calculator. Uh, and I have a little program called Mathematica. Uh, you can you can use your calculator. That's fine. Um, so then down here, I'm going to say, I'm going to make this bigger. And I'll say arc sine, arc tangent, there it is, of two-fifths. Oh, and I need to put a little decimal place there. And uh, it says, oh, 0 0.38. Oh, I don't think that's in degrees. Okay, so we'll ex oh, and actually there's a button you can um you can express it in degrees. Okay, so if I convert radians to degrees is 0.38. So the correct angle is 21.8014, but what is that angle with the correct amount of significant digits? Twenty degrees, right? Because uh, my numbers really weren't that precise. So then I'm going to put here the correct answer is twenty degrees. Okay, that's important when you're doing homework in Pearson because it's supposed to check for significant digits, and it will take off points for that. Okay. The um, that's a good question. Let's go check. All right, so you're saying arc cosine of what did you say? Five point four divided by five. So I'm gonna express it in degrees and yeah, it's it's pretty much the same. Yeah. So um that's right. If you let's say you you know the hypotenuse and you know your uh this side, now should you cut off the digits before you're done with the problem? Like when you're when you're multiplying numbers together, should you shut up uh cut off the digits then? No. You want to wait until the end, because if you cut them off too soon, then you're going to get some kind of crazy answer that doesn't make any sense. So don't throw away the extra digits until you get to the end. Now, he was saying if I use arc cosine, so if I had, if I wanted to get my angle, and I would say, all right, well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so Cosine of theta would be, uh, in this case, I'm going to call the adjacent x, and then my hypotenuse h, okay? So that would be uh, 5 divided by 5.4. And then I take the arc cosine of that, so I would have uh, my angle of theta here would equal the arc cosine. You can also write it as cosine minus 1 of five divided by 5.4, okay? And that gives you roughly the 20 degrees also, okay? So either one of those should work. We were off a little bit because um, 
I sort of uh, I sort of rounded off this number. So we had a little bit of discrepancy there. Uh, and that, that uncertainty is a very real thing, right? Uncertainty is real. It depends on how you measure something. This is going to be big when you do the labs. You're going to have to talk about your uncertainty. How accurately did you measure something? How accurately can you measure something? Um, I think I'm pretty accurate when I when I walk. I say this is about a meter. One, two, three, four. I think that was about four meters, but I could have easily been off by a third of a meter. Okay. Now, how many feet is one meter? Go. That's just, it's about three. I mean, I always think one meter is three feet, basically. Okay. A yard is. A yard is three feet, and a yard and a meter are about the same, right? So just in your mind, when you think about a meter, just think one meter is three feet, right? Don't worry about the, the conversion. But it's actually like 39 inches or something, right? Yeah, you're probably right. It's about, what did you say it was? Yeah, maybe it's about 3.1, okay? Maybe 3.2. Uh, this is about just think three feet. Okay, so if you're thinking you want to think in meters, one meter equals three feet. Which one is better, feet or meters? Which one do you prefer? Which one? Meters. Why is meters better? Yeah. Yeah, because how many feet are in a mile? Quick, tell me. Nobody remembers. Yeah. Oh, okay, we got, <laughs> we got one. <laughs> but how many feet are in seven miles? Ah, <laughs> but how many meters are in seven kilometers? 7,000 meters, boom. See how quick that was? Better. Um, which one is better? Liters or gallons? Quick, how many pints are in a gallon? You don't know. Don't pretend. You, nobody knows that. <laughs> Just kidding. Do you know how many pints are in a gallon? Okay. There's two quarts. Is that right? Four pints in a gallon. Hmm. I don't know. It's hard to remember. Um, how many pints are in a gallon? It's eight pints. Sorry. You failed. No. <laughs> Nobody remembers it because it's stupid, right? Our measurement system in America is dumb. It just is. No, it's, I mean, it's kind of dumb. Um, and we call all of our tools standard, right? The wrenches come in one fourth, one eighth, uh, and that's standard. It's not standard. The only place that uses it is here which is fine, except if you get some equipment from Europe and you get some from here, then you need two sets of wrenches. Why? Why do we do why? It's okay. The internet doesn't like me. That's fine. All right. So we'll come back to the trig, um, and, but um, know these equations. They they will help you with most vector problems, okay? So, but let's let's move on a little bit, okay? So, the quantity two point six seven times ten to the three. How many significant figures does it have? Um, if you think it's a, raise your hand. If you think it's b, raise your hand. C, yeah, it's C. 
three significant digits. So 2.67, this is in scientific notation, okay? Which is uh, a lot easier to work with because you only have, you can have two or three significant digits and then you can deal with really big numbers, right? And the, the, the digits here tell you your significant digits. So if the other number only has two significant digits, then you should only have two significant digits in your, in your answer, okay? So what are the correct SI units? SI are uh, the standard for physics and science, okay? Right? So what is it? Is it A, feet and pounds, B, centimeters and grams, or D, meters and grams, or D, meters and kilograms? If you think it's D, raise your hand. Okay, some of you didn't vote, which is fine. I hope you vote in the next election, because if you don't vote, your parents will. Do you want your parents to pick who the president is? They vote. You know your parents, especially your grandparents. They vote too. So you, you better vote because otherwise your grandparents are going to pick who's president next. Maybe that's okay. Uh, okay. So if Sam walks 100 meters to the right, then 200 meters to the left, his net displacement vector is what? Talking about displacement now, okay? As a vector is the distance from where you started with also the direction. So in our coordinate system here, okay, we have a one dimensional axis going this way. So there's right and left, okay? So it says Sam walks a hundred meters to the, or two, oh wait, okay. He walks 100 meters. So read the problem carefully. And if you don't, it's confusing. Read it a couple times and then draw a picture. So, and sometimes maybe for, do the actual, so let's say he walks 100 meters this way, uh, 10 steps, let's say 10 steps is 100 meters. And then he walks 200 meters this way to the left. What's the right answer? On the count of three, everybody shout it out. Okay, one, two, three. I think everybody said three. Some people were quiet, but it points to the left. That's right. It points to the left because um, he ended up to the left. Okay, so he walked 100 meters to the right, and then he went 200 meters to the left. And so his final position is 100 meters to the left of where he started. Okay, so hopefully this is easy and review, but we should still go through it, okay? All right, a velocity vector points in the same direction as a displacement vectors, A, or B, in the opposite direction of the displacement vector, or C, perpendicular to the displacement vector, in the same direction as the acceleration vector, or velocity is not represented by a vector. All right. All right, how many people think it's A? Raise your hands. B, opposite direction. C, perpendicular to the displacement, or D, in the same direction, the acceleration vector. Or E, velocity is not represented by a vector. Okay, there's only one vote. So why don't you talk about it since you seem unsure? And this, this will be on the homework. So hopefully we understand it.
All right, let's take another vote. How many people think it's A? Or B? C? Or D? All right. It's usually A in the same direction, except, you know, you could also think about if I throw this up in the air, right? My displacement is always pointing up, okay? But sometimes the velocity is coming down, then the velocity would be pointing out. When it's going up, then the velocity is pointing in the same direction direction right so usually it's in the same direction as the displacement vector all right so we've got speed velocity speed is not a vector what does that mean speed is not a vector what's the difference between speed and velocity yeah yeah speed is it's a magnitude it's the it's that number on your in your speedometer when you're driving Okay, it doesn't care what direction you're moving in. It just tells you how fast the wheels are turning, okay? But it has no direction. It's, it's a scalar, not a vector. Uh, displacement vector has a direction, okay? So that, that number in your speedometer doesn't tell you the ve your, your velocity vector. That would be cool if it did. Maybe not so useful when you're driving, okay? But the path along with an object moved, moved is called the object's trajectory. So maybe it's projectile motion. Maybe it's a racer on a track or a top. Okay, that's its trajectory. How does it move? Um, we can look at what's happening in each of these, okay? What's happening to the the motion for the top one, because each of these is a little bit different. We're thinking about the, the stop motion. What's happening in the first one? If I'm riding my skateboard and each picture is the same distance apart, what's what kind of motion is that? What is it? Yeah, it's constant. It doesn't change. What about the second one where she's running? What's happening to our motion there? Yeah, she's accelerating. She's going faster. What about in the bottom one? It's, what? yeah, it's decelerating. They're getting closer together at the end, so it's decelerating. That's right. Now, if you throw a basketball, you need to think about uh, displacement in the X and the Y direction, okay? So in the Y direction, if I throw that basketball at the hoop, Okay, then the distance between the basketballs in this way doesn't change, right? That distance stays the same. So as it's moving forward, its forward direction is constant. There's no change, okay? It's a constant velocity. But if I think about it in the Y direction, If I go from here to here, that distance is different than from here to here, okay? So my Y velocity, the way that it moves is different than my X direction, right? That's because uh, gravity is pointing downwards. And so it's not in the, there's no acceleration in front of it, okay? Which means if you, um, if I were to shoot a projectile this way, like if I shot a gun this way, and I dropped a bullet at the same time, they would both hit the ground at the same time because they fall downwards at the same rate. Even though the bullet is traveling hundreds of meters per second that way, it's still going to fall at the same rate. Okay? So those... Those two, those two things are different. Okay? They're not related to each other. Well, uh, but we could, uh, we know that this is going to come down. And so we could use the time that the basketball is in the air to determine how far it's going to travel. 
All right. So here's motion made by two cars. Which car A or B is going slower? Well, car A, the pictures of the cars are really close together. It was probably going slower. On B, uh, it's traveled more distance in between times that uh, where the picture was taken, so it's it must be traveling faster. Okay, let's let's look at some homework problem. Homework problems. All right, so I'm going to go over to Pearson. And I will put a link in Pearson so you can get to this quickly. Should have already done it, but I didn't do it yet. Okay. So in the Pearson website, mine sort of looks like this. All right. I'll turn off the lights. All right. So um, if you click on calendar, the calendar should tell you when things are coming up. Okay, so here on Tuesday at midnight, homework number one is due. Um, so let's click on the homework. All right, so we've got a bunch of problems, but I don't think they shouldn't be too bad. Um, well, let's look at one of the problems. All right, so once you get the homework open and you click on it, it should look something like this, okay? So, and then over here on the left, it says, in a typical Greyhound race, uh, a dog accelerates to a speed of 20 meters per second over a distance of 30 meters. Uh, it then maintains this speed. Okay. So we, uh, if we read the problem, I'll zoom in a little bit. All right. So um, let's read the problem carefully and talk about how to think about this problem. All right. So, um, Reading the problem carefully gives you, always gives you important clues about um, how to solve the problem. Okay, so and so they've made this stop motion diagram for our greyhound, and so we have to pick which one for the first part. Okay, so um, it says we're accelerating to a speed of twenty meters per second over for the first thirty meters. Okay, so. I'm gonna look at my plot here and I'm gonna say, all right, ones where it's, um, I'm gonna look at the first 30 meters, okay? So on, on the third one here, I look at it and I say, okay, if the start of the race is over here, because my green arrows are pointing this way, you can't really see the green arrows, but okay, they're green arrows, they're pointing that way. I don't know why they're so small. Um, so the green arrows are pointing that way. It's moving that way. And so for the first 30 meters, it's supposed to be accelerated. And I look at this one here and I say, hmm, okay. Well, the dots are the same distance apart for the first 70 meters. So that's not what the problem is saying. The first 30 meters, it is not accelerating. So it can't be this one, okay? Um, then I'm gonna look over here and I'm gonna say, okay, so it has to be the other ones. Uh, this one down here, what happens for the last 30 meters of my problem there? What's it doing? 
Yeah, it's decelerating. The problem does not say that it's decelerating. It says it then maintains this speed for the rest of the thing, right? So for the rest of the 100 meters, it is, the speed doesn't change. Okay, so that, that means that um, I only have two left. I've ruled out number one, number three and number four. So I look at the, the top two and I say, hmm, those look really similar. It's a little bit confusing, but uh, so it looks like at the top one, is that one a constant up at the top? Are those dots the same distance apart? No, it doesn't. Look, it looks like they get a little bit bigger, right? Because over here, this this distance here is bigger than over here. So that means there must be some acceleration going on there. So, okay, I guess that leaves that leaves this one maybe. Okay, but let's go to the next one. All right. Then it says the Nardo ring is a circular test track for cars. It has a circumference of 12.5 kilometers. Cars travel around the track at a constant speed of 100 kilometers an hour. Okay, so a car starts at an easternmost point of the ring and drives for 7.5 minutes at this speed. Okay, so what distance in kilometer does the car travel? Okay, the Nardo ring is a circular test track for cars. Okay, it has a circumference of 12.5 kilometers. And it's traveling at 100 kilometers per hour. What does circumference mean? Because if we, when we talk about circles, we're gonna have, of course, the radius, the diameter, and the circumference. What's the difference between radius and diameter? Yes. Right. So it's the distance from the center to the outside of the ring. Okay, so if I got my circle here. Here's my, my circle. The radius is from here over to there. Right? That's, my, that's my radius. Right? What's the formula for the circumference of a circle? That the circumference is if, say, a bug is right here, and he walked around the circle, and he was driving, and he kept track of the distance. How far would he walk? That's the circumference. What's the formula for circumference of a circle? So pi r squared, pi r squared, um, that's gonna give me units of meters squared, right? So meters squared is an area. So pi r squared is actually, which is, that's a very useful formula, pi r squared. That's the area of the circle. That's just how much distance, yeah. Yeah, two pi r, okay? Two pi r. And if you ever don't know a formula, don't feel bad because most people can't remember them. I don't remember all the formulas. I just look them up. It's fine, okay? So two pi r is the circumference of my circle. So if the ant walks around outside of the circle, or if you were driving, right? And you just, on this racetrack, right? It's a car, car is driving. It's got, uh, keeps track of the distance, right? So if the car drives around the circular racetrack, and let's go back to our problem. What does it say? It tells us the circumference is 12.5 kilometers. 
Okay, so if our if our car here, and I'm gonna draw a Lamborghini because my son really likes Lamborghinis. Okay, there's Lamborghini. If he drives all the way around here, then his odometer will measure register 2.5 kilometers. He drove all the way around that circular racetrack. Okay, so yes, it's a circle, but is that relevant for this problem? Okay, because it tells us how far he the 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 track is. Okay, and it says he drives at a hundred kilometers for uh hundred kilometers per hour for seven point five minutes at that speed. So, what distance in kilometer does the car travel? Does part A have anything to do with a circle? No, it doesn't matter if it's a circle. So. Oh, this is a good question. So if I'm going, I'll do a different problem. Let's say if I'm going 200 kilometers per hour and I drive at this speed for 17 minutes. Oh, wait, you can't see my picture. <laughs> I'm writing things here. Okay, so if my Lamborghini can go 200 kilometers an hour, because, you know, I got the Lamborghini Aventador, not the Hurricane. The event door, you know, that's the upgraded one. It's like 450,000. Of course, lime green. And I paid the extra 30,000 to get the insane package so I can be faster than a Tesla because that's important. You got to be faster than a Tesla. Okay. So if I go 200 kilometers an hour for 17 minutes, how far will I have driven? So I go 200 kilometers an hour. For 17 minutes, how far will I have driven? Let's calculate that one. I won't do the actual uh, problem. You'll have different numbers in your homework anyway. So, but I'll just I'll just make up my own problem. That's fine. Okay. So we need to know the what formula should we use for this? How do we get distance? Yeah. Yeah, that's a really useful equation. So we have. Distance x equals velocity times time. Now, we've got some unit troubles in here. We're going to have to convert units because our, our velocity here is in kilometers per hour, and our time is in minutes. So we can't really multiply those things together. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to do a conversion. So if I said 17 minutes, I want to convert this into hours. How do I convert 17 minutes into hours? Yeah, I divide it by 60. So I say there's 60 minutes per hour. So now I've got hours in the denominator of the denominator. So that, what happens then? Does it go, what do, it goes to the top, right? It goes up here. So hours will come up to the top. My minutes cancel. And so then when I say 17 divided by 16, that's going to give me my hours. So I'll get out my calculator again. And I'll say uh, 17 divided by 60. Nope, I messed up. 17 divided by 60 equals 0.2833 hours. Okay, so it's almost a third of an hour. That's right. So I'll say... 0.28333. And since I'm still calculating my problem, I'm not going to throw away those digits yet until we get to the end. At the end, then I'll, I'll throw away those digits, but you don't want to do that yet. Okay. Because um, you'll get uh, you'll get a mistake. All right. So if I go so I look at my formula here, x equals v times t. So now I've got my velocity. So I'll say x is going to equal 200 kilometers per hour. And now I've got my time t. I'm going to multiply that. I'll have 0 0.283333. I'll just leave those in there because I'm I'm calculating it still. Hours. My hours are going to cancel, and this is going to leave me kilometers. So I'll just say, now I'm going to multiply this by 200. 
Okay, so that that will give me x equals 56.66 six repeating. Okay, and this is going to be in kilometers. And it looks like in my in my original problem, I had two significant digits. So I'm going to round this off to significant two significant digits. So the correct answer then is going to be 57, 57 kilometers. Yeah. Ah, that's that's true. But I'm okay. You're getting really technical now. That or yeah, if it was so, you could say that it only has one significant digit. But if it was, I guess it was exactly two hundred, right? I'm I'm just saying that this is three significant digits. Although you're probably right, it is one. Okay, so if it is one. Well, here I definitely only had two, okay? So either you could say 60 kilometers per hour or 60 kilometers, that'd be fine. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna tell you. And if it's wrong, I can adjust the points, okay? But, uh, I'm going to assume that this is three significant digits because if it if it was less than that, okay, then you could write it as you'd say two times ten to the two, and then you'd know that that was only one significant digit. Okay. Since it you know since it's an even number there, then you know it's kind of a, a a tough call. But this is why we write it in scientific notation because then we know how many significant digits there are. But since I took the pain to write out 200, then let's say there's three significant digits, okay? Um, but I mean, you could, yeah, that you you could, you might say that that's one significant digit. I, I like this way better, this 57 kilometers, either one would be okay. But anything more than two is definitely wrong, okay? Definitely, definitely, okay. Thank you, like, and subscribe down below.